if there's any sound problems or other things, please let me know. Um, cool. So we're going to start uh, with a bit of an introduction to us. Uh, so this is, um, well, uh, so Suzanne's here now. I'll just introduce her quickly. So yeah, Suzanne's the head of English. She's Professor Suzanne Robson. Uh, she should be joining us on video soon as well. So, and um, yeah, I'm sure she'll introduce herself when she's here. Cool, um, but yeah, I'll just give you a quick overview. So these are some of the amazing books by, um, hi Suzanne, <laughs> great to see you. Sorry. Hey, so looking over here, my window's kind of over there, <laughs> so it's very confusing. Um, and if you hear an echo, Suzanne, let, can you let me know? Because um, I'm a bit worried my headphones are hearing it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, just to say, um, these are some of the amazing kind of areas that we work in in the English department. We're a really inclusive department and we'll go through some of the reasons why you should study with us in a bit. But we're covering both English literature, which has kind of been reconfigured this year, and MA Creative Writing, which is kind of, the, I think, the second or third year? Um, second, yeah, cool. So it's really exciting. We've got a great cohort of students at the moment on both of our English Lit and um, Creative Writing courses. So hopefully you discover why um, it's amazing in this short 40 minute session, which will include a Q&A at the end as well. Cool, so these are some of the books by some of our academics who work within the department. We've got a pretty big English department with lots of different expertise and we're here to help you with your masters try and get um, closer to what you want to research and maybe in your uh, in your undergrad you didn't quite get um to where you wanted to go and we're, help, we're here to help you to go further than your dissertation and all that kind of stuff cool so there's some basics um what is an ma so we're not talking today about pgr which is um phd courses so that's becoming a doctor whatever this is kind of a stepping stone between that so it's level seven university course so you go up to level six in um in your undergrad and then um it specializes in the subject area so we're talking about english literature and creative writing and it builds on ug studies so we're going to build on what you've learned already but it might also be a completely different area that you want to go into so we're open to that um it's one or two years one year is full time and the other one so two years is part time you just do slightly less modules in part time um, it's more focused, but also more, more intense. People people think that it might be, I don't know, more relaxed or something. But actually, in terms of reading and what we ask of you, it, we're a Russell Group University. We're asking you to challenge yourself and push yourself through our courses at all levels. Um, yeah, so these are some of the reasons why people like studying here. Um, so Senate House Library, great place. Um, in Bloomsbury, which all of our students have access to, and lots of MA students love working there alongside some of the other great libraries in London, like uh, British Library and some art libraries that we call as well. Um, so we're an inclusive environment. We, um, we try and make sure every student has the support that they need to succeed. Um, and I'd say, from my experience of working here maybe seven years, that I've noticed that people really do make that extra effort to create that environment. Um, so the next one was about independent learning. So this is going to be about you this time. It's not going to be about necessarily um, doing everything your classmates do. It's going to be about you going off and actually going on a sort of journey of your own. Um, and then you have um, friendly expert staff. So we have about um, over 60 staff, I think, in the department um, and all various sort of um, all-time, part-time kind of things. So they might not all be working at once, but we have loads of staff who can help and um, sort of help you think about your research in a more in-depth way as well. We have some really great partners based on campus. So we have Wazir Theory Magazine, which is the international magazine of, of contemporary writing, uh, which makes us quite different as well. We have these amazing art organizations based on campus, um, which kind of leads me on to research events. So we have a really active research culture across English and drama, um, creative writing, but also throughout um, humanities, social sciences, and we even double in science and other things around that. So don't, we're not afraid of mixing it all up and being interdisciplinary at Queen Mary. So we have a really friendly support team who can help with, um, with obviously when you're struggling, we get a lot of people coming forward, but actually we want to hear from you throughout your 
um, course and try and help you along the way. Um, and we help with careers. And it may not be immediately obvious, I think we get that a lot with English literature, what the um, sort of point of doing the degree is in terms of like your career. And I'd say it's really valuable. You're taking your um, career to the next step and showing your interests. So people like publishers, um, people like The Guardian, like this is an event we did with The Guardian. They really want that depth of knowledge and actually you're going to develop that on an MA course. Cool, so I think I'm going to hand over to, oh no, there's a few more points. So these are sort of common questions that we get asked quite a lot. So we've got a small class size teaching. We expect applicants, so when you're applying, we, we really want people to have a T1 in a related subject. So that could be a humanity subject um, or something where you've done writing. I mean, if it's a completely different kind of degree, it might be good to explain that within your um, personal, uh, we call it, Statement of purpose that we marry. So that's like the bit in the job application that you do where you show why you want to do your course. Um, 15,000 word dissertation. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on any of these two panels on. Um, and but there's three libraries to work in. So Senate House is recommend for master students. My land, Whitechapel is like an old um, converted church, which is really beautiful, which some of our students discover and love as well. And it's sort of two days a week in class, but we also ask them to do a lot of reading. Um, and lots of people ask us about funding. So funding is really important. And we'll send out these slides after um, the event. But if you want to screenshot and do searches on these things, it's um, really easy to do that. Just to say you don't need to join the audio or video just yet. You might need, want to do that later if you want to ask a question. But we're just going to talk for a little bit about the course that is. So thanks for joining us. Um, so, so some of the funding things, so we've got the UK master's loan for UK students, we've just announced um, black and global majority studentships, which are pretty amazing, so we've got £18,000 of living stipend on top of fees, um, but they are for QMEL alumni only, I'm afraid, sorry about that. Um, and the funding directory, um, the UK and international is worth looking at. Um, so that has scholarship information um, for international and home students. Um, Postgraduate Funding Guide UK, another one um, that's good. Alternative Funding will give you our password if you want to look through that. Um, it's another really good source of grants and funding available. Um, and also international country contacts at Queen Mary are really important. So talk to most people ask, the most common questions I get are, are the scholarships? And, what we say, especially if you're a international student, is to you to your country live because they want the government to be able to be. Hi, Rupert, you're cutting out a bit, sorry. What's that, Suzanne? You were just sorry. cutting out just in that last little bit. Okay. Um, yeah, I was just basically saying about um, international country contacts. So, con so basically at Queen Mary, we have a contact for basically every country around the world. Um, so they will understand your country best. Uh, so yeah, get in touch with them, or if you don't know who they are, we can put you in touch. Hopefully that's all right, Suzanne. <laughs> cool. Um, so yeah, these are kind of re general reasons why you should do an MA. So gaining expertise, personal growth, preparation for a PhD, uh, transferable career skills. But you might have your own sort of reasons for doing it. And coming back to education, maybe you might take in time out and we've welcomed lots of different kinds of students within the English and Drama Department. So yeah, this is kind of our ethos um, and what we believe in. It's about inclusivity, um, also looking at lots of different platforms, creative writing, um, cultures, periods, all that kind of thing. We're um, really up for if that's kind of your bag as well. Cool, so I'm gonna um, hand over, it's in a minute, um, to Suzanne, who can hopefully introduce herself and then is going to talk a little bit about the um, MA English literature. So if you're here for that, um, we're going to talk about that first and then we're going to talk about creative writing. Maybe um, one thing just to test out the Q&A, what would be really great is if you can put in the Q&A whether, um, so the Q&A is like a tab on the right hand side of your screen and um, you might need to open it up, there might be like a little thing. And then if you look at session, there should be event, my agenda, session. If you look at session, 
then you should be able to ask a question. So if you can ask a question and put which course you're here to talk about, here to think about. So you've got English literature or creative writing. Cool, so I'm gonna hand over to you, Suzanne, and maybe you could introduce yourself as well to talk a bit about the MA English literature. I'm gonna turn my camera off for a bit. Okay, thanks very much, Rue. Uh, thanks so much to everyone for joining us this morning. Uh, my name is Suzanne Hobson. Um, I'm a professor of 20th century literature. Um, I've taught on the MA in the past. It's one of my favourite things to do because I think at the MA level, you have so much more opportunity to delve in depth into the subjects you, you're, you're passionate about and are excited about exploring with equally passionate, interested um people in your year, in your cohort rather. So MA in English Literature, it's worth saying first of all that we have recently revamped our English Literature MA and we've done it really in response to student feedback. So if you've already received an offer from us, you should have got an email last week explaining uh, the changes. Just to summarise these, you, we are now running a single MA program as opposed to several different ones, but you are still able to take a specialist route through that program. And I'll talk about those specialist routes a bit later on. Um, everybody, another way in which this has changed is that everybody now has a choice of modules in both semesters. So there's no longer a requirement on the English Literature MA to take a single compulsory module. You get to design and tailor make your, your degree um, across both semesters. If anyone has any more questions about the way we've changed it, I, I can come back to those at the end. Um, Rup, can you share the next slide, please? Brilliant, thank you. Okay, so here are our modules, um, which we are offering next year in 2023 to 24 in both semesters. So all of our modules draw on the research strengths of our department. So you'll see they range from the early modern, from global Shakespeare, right up to the present day to the contemporary moment. You'll also notice that they focus on the local. So we have writing in the East End, but there are also lots of modules that are inviting you to think in a more global international dimension and I'd say that's very much the character of English literature at Queen Mary across all of our degrees it's called English but we're in no respects limited to thinking about the nation we think widely about writing in English but there's also the opportunity on some of these modules to look at some writing and in translation and think about on international romanticism for example how writing in English might compare to writing that's happening on the continent in French in German what's the, if you like, the kind of European character of, of literature in this time. On post-colonial literatures, of course, you'll think much more widely afield, um, thinking about, for example, African literatures, you'll think about Middle Eastern literatures, there'll be an opportunity to think in a real global context about what is happening to writing, um, to literature in the contemporary moment. All of our modules feature the latest approaches and methodologies, and many, as Ruth already said, are very interdisciplinary in nature. We approach English as a very porous discipline that pulls on things like philosophy, history, art histories. Um, we, we're thinking not in a narrow way, but about the ways in which English might speak to different areas of cultural production, I think, through all of these modules. Um, what's different to undergraduate level with these modules? Well, you're getting the opportunity, I think, to explore topics and texts in much greater depth than at undergraduate level. We're asking you to think alongside the latest research in the field on these subjects. And you will, of course, on all of these modules have the guidance and the support of leading researchers in the field. Um, so Rue showed you that slide that had all of those books on it. They're all written by people in our department and they're all bringing the expertise from those books, from those publications to their teaching on these modules. Okay, uh, so you can see here we've got the modules broken down into two semesters. The first semester modules really aim to give you a firm anchoring in either 
a particular historical period, a particular genre, or a particular theme. The second semester modules then give you the opportunity to offer a kind of deeper dive into some of the research specialisms of our department. Um, everyone on the English Literature MA is required or has the opportunity, to put it in a more positive way, to work on a dissertation project. Uh, this project is a piece of independent research. It's 15,000 words. Now, we don't throw you straight into this project and we don't expect you to arrive already knowing what it is you're going to write your dissertation on. Of course, you might do. If you do, great, do tell us that in your application. But we give you guidance and support in honing, designing, choosing your topic. So in the first semester, you'll take workshops um, which focus on research skills, focus on writing research questions, focus on helping you to shape and craft a project that you'll then pursue in the second and third um, semesters. OK, so in semester two, you'll then be allocated a supervisor who will be an expert in your chosen area or chosen field. And they'll work together with you one on one in developing your project, which you then finally submit, usually towards the end of August. The dissertation is really the opportunity for you to kind of um, if you like, flourish and come into your own as an independent researcher to develop the topics, the themes that, that you are particularly interested in, particularly fascinated by. Very often we find dissertations, if you want to go on and do further research, they can often even turn into a publication. Um, so here you are really edging towards being an original independent researcher. Okay, um, Rue, can you share the next slide, please? Thank you. OK, so I mentioned earlier, we now have a single MA programme, but with different routes through it. And hopefully this next slide is going to help you or help me to explain um, how these routes work. So you have the opportunity, if you like, um, to take a general route, which is entirely flexible. This means you can choose any module, any two modules rather, in each semester, and you can um, range widely from the early modern, say, to post-colonial contemporary literature, from the 18th century um, to thinking about queer theory, for example. Um, if you want, however, you can also craft a more specialist route and you can see the options for specialist routes in the four, the second, third, fourth and fifth column here. So you can specialise in the 18th and 19th century, modern contemporary, post-colonial and global, or you can take a theory specialism. Now to qualify for this specialism, you just need to take one module in each semester from each, from from your specialist list. Um, you then need to write a dissertation in that same area. So for example, if you want to do the modern and contemporary specialization, you might choose to take text media theory and then the state of the novel and then to write a dissertation, picking a topic out of the air on J.M. Kurtzia, for example. Um, and that would give you a, a, a kind of specialist route in the modern and contemporary. Uh, can you move to the next slide, Rue? Brilliant. Um, so here we've got some uh, examples of the, the kinds of things you'll focus on in those specialist routes. So this is the 18th and 19th century specialist route. And if you choose to take this pathway, you're going to explore the transformation of English literature across a 200 year period, sees the emergence of modern public culture, the rise of romanticism and social and cultural changes in the Victorian era. Um, and you can see here a couple of our academics in this area and a couple of books that they've they've published recently in this area. Um, can you show the next slide, please, Rui? OK, uh, second example area of specialism. Uh, this is the contemporary um, and the modern. So this is for people who might be interested in thinking about modernism or write up to contemporary literature writing 
now. And as you can probably tell from the book that's um, shown on this page, Zara Dinan's, Dinan's very wonderful, The Digital Banal, this allows you to think about literature in a time of great kind of technological um, and media change. So, of course, when we think of English literature, we tend to think of the book. But at Queen Mary, we're also thinking about the way the digital has changed how we how we interact with literature and how, how we read, in effect. So this might be a route for you if you are interested in exploring these kinds of questions. Uh, can you just flip to the next slide, Ruth? OK. Uh, Post-colonial global literatures is another example of a route you can take. This allows you to take an expansive view of what the post-colonial means in the contemporary moment. Um, an enormous range of literature you might encounter on this mod on this route, rather. So we have specialists who think about Africa, South Asia, the Middle East, the Caribbean. We also have specialists who think about um, the post-colonial as it is exemplified within, within Britain. So, for example, we have experts thinking about Black and Asian writing in Britain, and this is will be another theme that you could encounter on this route. Um, thank you, Ree. Is there one more? I think that might be it, actually. Yeah, uh, teaching structure. So uh, as I've already said, uh, you take two modules in each semester. Um, modules are usually delivered as two-hour seminars. Um, there will be usually a short presentation from the seminar leader. There may be student-led participation. Uh, then in the exam term and the summer, uh, you work independently um, or with the guidance rather of your supervisor on your dissertation. Rue also mentioned, but I, I really want to flag as well, that as an MA student, you are a fully integrated part of our research community and culture. So you have the opportunity to attend research seminars given by members of staff, but also by external speakers. You can attend um, reading groups. There are social events. You are, we see you, I think, much more so than at undergraduate level as being a, an active part of our research culture and community. OK, I think that's everything on English literature. Do feel free to put any um, questions in the chat that you have about this, this particular MA. Thanks, Suzanne. That was great. Whistle's dope tour of the kind of new programme that we're running this year. Cool. So I was getting quite a bad echo during it. I'm really hoping that other people haven't. Um, just let me know. I think it might be my setup with my headphones. I've tried to fix it, but let us know if there's any issues with tech or anything like that or questions in the chat. We really want to hear from you. And we'll open that up if you do want to turn your video or audio on at the end. Like, just let us know. Um, or I'll do a request by the bottom bit of the screen. Um, if you can't find the question, the question and answer bit, it's basically in a tab on the right hand side of your screen if you're on a desktop. Not quite sure on mobile. But um, I'm sure you'll find it if you check the options, usually like a dot, dot, dot. Um, so yeah, we've got one. That's great. So we've already got a question for, from Eva. Cool. So yeah, maybe we'll take that one now just before we get into creative writing anyway. I'll just change the slide so we're officially in creative writing world now. And um, basically, yeah, so you submitted your application early this month. Will interviews be conducted at some point? Uh, later point and yeah that usually happens with creative writing we usually want to speak to everyone and and with English we do want to have like a one-to-one -one with every person who applies to check around whether the course is suitable Um, obviously to try and um, gauge your kind of interest and kind of help you out with starting the course if that's um, what you want to do so yeah we should be in touch with you I'd say like the turnaround time at the moment is probably around four weeks so I'm hoping you will get an answer quickly, but if you don't, um, you can get in touch with us and I'll put an email address in the chat, which you can chase your application with as well. So if you don't hear anything in the next few weeks, I would um, get back in touch with us and we'll get the ball rolling if anything's stuck in our system or anything. But we'll have received your application and we will be working through it right now. They just have lots of applications. So, yeah, thank you for that. We're really appreciative of it. Cool. So I'm going to introduce MA Creative Writing. And remember, again, you can um, you can ask questions in the chat. 
Um, I just say creative writing is really exciting, kind of newish um, part of our English offer at Queen Mary. So um, yeah, we've got an incredible cohort. I was trying to find, um, this is like our kind of first cohort of um, creative writing MA students. They've created this um, amazing anthology of like creative work, um, which we're happy to send you as well if you want to drop us a line um, and give us an email. Uh, with your address and we can find some out to you um, but it's a really good example of the kind of ingenuity and exciting things that are going on within the program with these amazing team of people um so some of the people come in just for certain things so rosie's on there but i don't think she's actually here um for the next cohort but in terms of um these other people so you've got brian dylan um he's our creative writing kind of guru director helped to form the course right at the beginning and has helped make it really amazing this year. Nisha Ramaya, who's a poet. Um, Isabel Weidner, who, are, who is a basically an incredible writer, contemporary fiction writer, who has won the Goldsmith Prize and is really hot in terms of writing at the moment. Even um, Michael Hughes, who actually, um, who's the last person kind of at the top here, um, he's on the team as well. And he writes, um, he's an actor, but also uh, an amazing novelist. Um, and writes about things like um, yeah the troubles in Ireland and retelling the troubles in Ireland through a kind of Greek kind of tragedy kind of um, uh, yeah kind of epic story. So they're all really interesting. And Michael said to me the other day like Isabel's the most exciting person in literature at the moment, like the most exciting person in books. So keep an eye out for their work as well. There's a really cool book called Corey Far Social Mobility that's coming out in July. So check that out. Um, so yeah, we're transcending disciplinary boundaries with our creative writing course. We're not so bothered with genre. We're not so bothered with, you know, kind of the old sort of way of looking at creative writing. We mix it all up, and we we do teach like um, the old sort, the kind of old way as well. So in terms of like fiction, poetry, nonfiction, performance, but we are interested in the connections and also the kind of research and sort of scholarly um, way of looking at writing as well. Cool. So, and I say, with, as with all of our courses, all of our references are pretty contemporary. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to quickly go through the modules within the creative writing course. Um, so we'll send you this presentation again afterwards. So do have a look um, if you don't get it. Um, we've had another question as well, but maybe we'll take that one just after the creative writing bit, if that's all right, Sarah. Thank you. Um, so basically, in terms of um, creative writing, you have uh, two main modules, um, which one in each semester. So one is called Creative and Critical Writing One, and I'd say that critical part is really important for the course. So I'll just read this out for you. This compulsory module explores creative and critical writing across multiple literary forms. So we're talking about those forms again: nonfiction, fiction, poetry, dramatic, and visual writing. So taking um, writing out just from the sort of standard way of um, producing books and actually looking at it in a visual way. Um, we're looking at criticism and creative and how that can work together. Um, and also we're going to introduce you to lots of different theoretical meth methods and practical frameworks for understanding text, but also producing text. So we're going to challenge the way that you write maybe and show you new ways that you can write. And within workshops, and it's taught in a very practical way through workshops and seminars. Cool. So seminars are pretty much like discussion. If you didn't do that, it's uni. And then, so the next one I want to talk about is actually the one at the top um, on the right, which is collaborative practices, which is this module, basically the module where they kind of produce like an anthology, also an event and an online. And I've actually been working quite closely with that cohort and um, working together. So you're not just fighting on your own in a vacuum. You're actually working with your team of, of people within the course and uh, creating an anthology and um, obviously creating your own work, but looking at ways you can um, uh, publish your own work and DIY publishing and event organization. And also online, I mean, we did some amazing stuff on TikTok and on Instagram for, for this module as well. So have a look on our Instagram and whatever channels, I'll put them on the chat, but it's at Q-M-U-L-S-E-D, so S for sugar, yeah. Um, the, other, the other couple um, are writing through research, so 
it's about bringing your research into your creative writing so it's not just going to be purely imagination it's going to be about um looking at deep kind of ways of um doing academic research and then and producing expressive text from that so that's really cool module um, and that happens i think th these ones kind of switch around sometimes so the writing from research and collaborative practices might be in the first or second but you'll do one you'll do either in each um either one or the other in each semester so you do the main one at the start and then you'll do one of the other ones and then your creative writing dissertation will kind of run across the whole year and um, so we're looking for either 15,000 words of hybrid creative critical work so you might think your work is kind of critical in its in its nature um or we're looking for 10,000 words of creative work plus 5,000 critical so you're still having to do a bit of critical um and in terms of the 15,000 word project, you're kind of looking critically through your work as well. So just to repeat that, I think I've done that <laughs> twice now. Cool. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk about the practicals. Maybe we can talk um, about Sarah's questions as well. Um, so yeah, um, Suzanne's really handily on today as well. So in case you can't see the chat or anything, I'll just read it out. That Sarah basically said that um, I've not applied yet. I'm too late to start in September. It's kind of the reason why we're doing this event. Like, we're really happy to open um, applications as long as we can. Obviously, like, if we do get to a point where we're full or um, or that you don't have much time to actually process the application, we look at everyone, every application that comes in individually and make a decision on it. So that takes time, sadly. And basically what um, we're looking for is yeah, it's different, especially within creative writing, I'd say it's a bit more like subjective. And obviously we just want to know that you'll kind of get the best out of the course. Um, what was the other one? So yeah, so in terms of your question, you can still apply. And applications officially don't close until way into September. So like, I think it's like the 2nd of September or something, which always worries me a lot because basically people apply then and actually won't get um, won't get onto the course in time. So I would try and apply as soon as you can. Um, the application process is relatively easy. I'd say the hardest bit is, um, so I'll go through what you need to do anyway. So you've got application process is basically online. From, uh, it's, an, it's a direct application to us. It's not like UCAS, you basically apply direct. And um, there's a link on all of our course websites um, which says apply now and that's where you'll start your application in a system that we call MySys. So that's what it kind of looks like below if you get to that point. Um, and uh, so what you'll need before you kind of start or maybe like you can start anytime so we'll keep reminding you to finish the application. I think you have about 60 days to finish it um, but we can extend that if you let us know. So then two academic references. Um, so if you can't get that, if it's a long time ago, you might want to get a work reference and maybe something that can show um, show your writing. I think that's what we're mainly asking about within references. Um, and personal statement, I think I might have confused this a bit by calling it a personal statement, but I think in the application process it's called statement of purpose. It's the same thing. It's basically um, a chance for you to write a bit about yourself and how your experience relates to the course and why you want to do the course. And um, it just helps us make decisions. Um, so please do take time on that one um, and put in examples of your work or your interests that will be relevant for the course. Um, requirements, so in terms of entry, we're looking for a two one um, or first ideally, but there are exceptions and we know people have come from lots of different backgrounds. So we've had like teachers who've been out of um, out of like um education for the, in terms of learning themselves like for years and years we've had people come back to education we've had people who've come through access um access schemes so yeah do talk to us if you're confused or don't think you're aren't sure whether your qualifications um would be suitable all we want to make sure is that um you'll be able to cope with the material but also that you'll enjoy the course we don't want to take um you know it's a big commitment in terms of financially and also um in terms of time so we want to make sure it's right um so yeah the funding guide just really like again just to mention that um cool um i think we've got a question around from eva around um creative writing application so i'd say cv is relatively important 
but not it's not the main thing the personal statement is where we'll, uh, the statement of purpose as well we'll mainly be looking cv is kind of a reference it's mainly used for more like vocational courses to sort of see oh well they've done this so they should probably you know go on this dentistry course or something so we always ask for it but I'd say if your CV can show that you've got experience within, I don't know, if you're a writer like poetry or like working for organisations, that could be really useful. But in your statement of purpose is where you should really be putting your experience. So sum it up for us. Give us a list of things that you've done. That would be really helpful. Hopefully that answers a little bit. Cool. Cool. So I'm not sure what we've got next, but we might be. Um, oh yeah, we've got onto this already. That's great. So we're just going to go to like a more general Q and A now. We've only got a few minutes left, so um, we've been doing questions as we go along. Um, but just to say that these people are available to chat and to respond to you via email as well. So if you want to get in touch with us, Suzanne's on there. So she's the head of English and has kind of been in touch with um, and part of the process of um, making these courses happen. So. Um, she's a really good person to chat with. Um, Faisal, who, if you want the intricacies of applications and kind of talking about um, maybe chasing them, maybe asking what's going on, we can do that for you. Get in touch with us by Faisal and his is there. I'm there, I can do general questions about the course. Like I pretty much know quite a lot of students and maybe put you in touch with them as well if you want to. There's also a really good student on um, on MA Creative Writing who's on this thing called Unibuddy, so you can chat with them directly. So I can put them in there, in touch. And Isabel and Michael from the um, from the creative writing team. Um, sorry, I might have actually got a bit confused with their titles there. But um, hopefully we've got it right. Um, but yeah, so if there's any more questions, otherwise we'll wrap up um, the session for today. But thanks for your time, and hopefully that's given you a flavour of our MA English literature, but also our MA creative writing. Can I just make a quick point that I forgot to make in the thing, just to say, because I was talking about the different routes you can do. You can, do, of course, do the very flexible, general, open routes, or you can follow a specialist pathway. You don't have to decide that at the application stage. You can just apply for the MA in English Literature, and then you can think about it over the summer, and um, we, you can elect to do that when you choose your modules later on in the summer. Okay. Thanks, Rui. And thanks everyone for coming. Yeah, thank you all. And um, yeah, I think we're coming to the end now. So we've got time maybe for one last question. If you, you can turn your camera on if you want to, um, or otherwise, um, we're really happy to receive questions afterwards and have further chats. We're here all year round, like we don't just suddenly disappear. We um, are really happy to chat. And it's a friendly environment in terms of Queen Mary. We're not um, going to you to go away. We want to talk to you. Um, and hear about your interests. That's kind of the most interesting part of my job is hearing about um, students, um, yeah, kind of aspirations and that kind of thing. So, yeah, we have actually have an in person event later today. So, we might see some of you there maybe. But um, we won't be doing this bit of it, but we will be there to answer more questions in detail um, in person. So, that's in the Octagon. I think it's from about four, four thirty. Um, otherwise, yeah, get in touch online and we'll try and arrange more um, chats if you want them. Cool, so I can't see any more questions. Uh, yeah, there's still time and you can, um, you can put them in the q and I think, once we finish the video. So, do, um, yeah, do keep asking and get in touch with us. Yeah, my name's Rui, I work in the department, so I'm on the slide. Um, so my full name's Rupert Damoya and um, Suzanne, of English, she's there on Cam or Faisal. A really good point to get into the courses as well. So, yeah, I think we're going to finish. I just want to say a big thank you to Suzanne for joining me today and talking about the course, and a big thank you to all of you for um, giving up your uh, morning to, to um, hear about our courses. So, do get in touch if you have any questions. Thank you, guys. And yeah, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna leave, which I think means go on the little corner, Suzanne. So, I think I'm gonna do that. I'll keep an eye on the